Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. I hope you are very well where you are and whatever time of day it is. And welcome to um, a conversation about Goizueta Business School, two year and one year MBA full-time programs, as well as our application process. So my name is Kathleen Edwards. I'm part of our MBA admissions team here at Goizueta. And I'm so excited to be able to connect with you virtually and um, discuss our process, what makes Goizueta special, and also how for how to help you submit a strong competitive application. So welcome. Um, I know we'll be able to, I'll be able to see your questions a little bit later. I'm going to do go through a bit of a presentation first, just to share some information with you about our MBA program. And then we'll go into um, the more details of the application process. I know that's on everyone's mind, but first we got to start out with why you should be applying to Grace Run Business School. Um, and it is a fantastic program and I'm proud to represent it. So what I'm going to do here is share uh, my screen, a little presentation. Here we go. Great. And it looks like you can all see that. So again, this is Goy's Weta Business School. We are located in Atlanta, Georgia, um, the southeast uh, part of the United States, certainly the biggest and busiest city in the southeast, an international hub, both for airlines, uh, specifically Delta, um, as well as for commerce and for culture, too. So what I want to make sure that you walk away with today, knowing if nothing else, is that Guizueta is a unique um, combination of these three factors among the U U.S. business schools. So among the U.S. schools, we are, um, of course, in the top 25 consistently across the board, but unique in the sense that we are in a large business city, such as Atlanta, of 7 million people, major Fortune 500 headquarters, but then also a small MBA program, small by design. We are really designed to give you, the student, um, the full range of access to our professors, the faculty, their research, their programming, as well as our career resources, the alumni network, um, and each other. So that really does make a difference as you think about your business school community and being um, having all the benefits of a large city, but still the benefits of a small class size so that you'll know your entire cohort of incoming students as well as the class above you, the class that comes in after you. And then you'll have very close um, relationships and conversations um, during school and then well after graduation with your faculty and staff. They really are um, choose to be at Goizueta because of that close-knit community and the access to the students. So of course, we're an MBA program. We deliver a fantastic um, business administration education focused on general management skills. What I will point out is, of course, our business analysis STEM uh, major. So it's a little bit different than the rest of these concentrations that you see on the board, just in that it's one or two more electives. But what's great about our program is that you have a broad range of electives built into the curriculum so you can complete more than one concentration. So you could complete the STEM business analysis major as well as an entrepreneurship or social enterprise or technology management concentration in addition to that. So you're not limited by any means, um, but you're still able to complete that STEM designation. I'll talk a little bit more um, in a minute about the difference between the one year and the two year pro full time programs, but I just want to make sure that y'all are aware that that STEM designated business analysis major is available in both the one year and the two year MBA program. So there's no um, limitation at all in terms of coursework through the one year program. So overall, of course, we're a business school. We're a general management approach to that. But within that er within that broader area, we have a few strategic initiatives that you will see as a student and that you'll feel through the elective options, but as well as the outside of class initiatives and activities. So one of those um, components is the Institute for Business and Society. This is based on a major gift we received from the Goizueta Foundation recently to expand our existing social enterprise center. And you'll see 
see it's really fascinating to study the impact of business on society through various different means through economic um, equity, but also sustainability and environmental ability. And we see a lot of students who are thinking about how to apply technology to environmental issues, how to combat multiple social issues and environmental issues with business, either through um, startup programs or through the way business moves into different areas. So that's something you may be interested in as well. The Marketing Analytics Center has been very well established and is a wonderful um, job at bringing in uh, data-based reviewing of marketing, product management, those sorts of things are going to be included in this area. You'll also really enjoy our sports marketing classes, I think, whatever sport you're a fan of, studying the idea of fandom and fanalytics and how it applies, how you naturally have probably grown up with it for whatever home team you're cheering for, but then also how that applies to businesses and what that means as we, particularly in terms of social media um, and how we think of businesses as um, fit, being a fan of that business or, or that brand. Certainly Coca-Cola may be something you're aware of, that brand awareness, and how does that translate to fandom? Um, leadership development is built into the curriculum in several different ways because our goal is to graduate effective leaders, decision makers, and managers. And those aren't necessarily always the same thing. So you are really able to hone your individual leadership style, determine what that means in terms of situations, um, and really build up your confidence ready to go out into your full-time positions after business school and make an impact. That doesn't mean you need to be the CEO right after graduation, but it means you're influencing others making an impact on your organization. And then, of course, the Center for Entrepreneurship and Inv Innovation will be interesting to you. Whatever your um, academic and professional interests are, entrepreneurship really is applicable in a lot of different ways. And so you may be thinking about starting your own business or exploring the idea, mark, um, you know, building a product, marketing it in addition to your day job, those sorts of things. So you have lots of people around you who are, have similar mindsets and are also excited to cheer you on and support you and maybe partner together to start a business or it's just about learning those holistic skills of understanding a business landscape, um, thinking about how to develop a business plan, those sorts of things for now or for the future. We, I mentioned um, that benefit that you have because of the small by design program, and that's absolutely true. By no means, though, are you lacking in ways to engage with those classmates. Really, it um, opens that up remarkably. So you will be very involved as a student. You will get to know your classmates in a lot of different ways through your professional associations, through maybe the consulting association, the technology club, whatever it is that you're interested in professionally, you will absolutely benefit from that group and that preparation for um, for job interviews, um, the knowledge sharing, all those things that happened, the alumni interaction that's facilitated by those clubs, as well as the work with the Career Management Center. But then, of course, there's life outside of your um, job and academic work, too. We know that you need to enjoy your time as a student. That's part of one of the many benefits of being in Atlanta. Um, you have a lot of culture to explore, whether it's food, music, sports, um, and you have a new group of very good friends to do that with. And you'll see that through the social activities. You also have several different ways, again, to put into practice your leadership skills and development through the Goys by a Business Association, which is our student government, um, and all those different components of what it means to be part of a school community at Goys by so the outcomes, career outcomes, we know it's absolutely on your mind. We know you're thinking about um, all the different school options that you have in large part because of what you want to do after business school. And that's absolutely important. It should be part of your review process of school in the same way that it's important to us as we review your applications. We want to understand what your professional goals are and how we can partner with you for success. And these career results are really a result of that partnership between students and the Career Management Center. You will have an individual career management or career coach from very early on based on your industry interest um, or functional interest. We will work with you really as soon as you are admitted and submit your enrollment deposit. You will hear from the Career Management Center to help you hit the ground running, whether it's in your full-time search or your internship search. 
These figures that you see are from the class of 2020. We'll have the class of 21 figures up soon. You'll see they're very similarly strong. All students who are seeking an internship have been placed in an internship. And then uh, typically more than 90 or 95 percent of students have secured or accepted a position within three months after graduation. Um, and certainly you'll be able to see a more detailed employment report on our website. I can post that link in a little bit, um, but encourage you to think about attending an upcoming event we're calling Virtual Super Week. Um, and we'll have several different career related sessions there. And so when you do review our employment report, remember that it's not separated out by international or domestic students. We incorporate all that data is for all the students, so it's not separated out. Um, you'll see a sampling of our recent hiring firms here. You may know that we are a bit known as a bit of a consulting school uh, for the past several years. Our students have done very well, um, historically done very well in consulting uh, job searches and positions. Um, and that's in large part due to the fantastic curriculum, the experiential work that you'll have working on real business cases with real clients in the classroom, studying um, analysis and best practices from consulting firms, how to apply those frameworks to business problems, all those sorts of things. You really get the experience in the classroom that prepares you well, not only for the interview, but to be effective in the internship and then in the full-time offer as well. Um, but certainly you're not limited in any sense um, by being in the Southeast or, um, or by, to consulting. Our students are going into a variety of different functional areas and different industries, including technology. Um, many students go to the West Coast after graduation. A large number do stay in the Southeast of the US, which you'll see for a few different reasons. Some people fall in love with Atlanta and our low cost of living and comfortable lifestyle and find an offer here and end up staying, which is wonderful for you as a student because you have that access to the alumni base right here in the area. But also our students are going to New York, DC, Chicago, Texas, Austin, um, and the West Coast from Seattle to San Jose and, and LA. Um, so they're no, by no means limited, but there are some great perks to being here in the Atlanta area that some students choose to choose to continue on after graduation. So here's a little bit more about the city. I am an Atlanta um, native. I grew up here, I was born and raised. It's my hometown. So of course I'm proud of it and always happy to welcome new people to the city. And you'll see that it's very accessible, a very diverse city. Um, in terms of US students as well as international students, um, and also an education center. So you'll meet other graduate students from Georgia Tech down the road, University of Georgia, Georgia State, but of course from all over Emory University as well. Um, the Emory University is about half undergraduate and half graduate. So you have access to um, not only the law school students across the street, the School of Public Health, the medical school. Um, there are a lot of other graduate students here at Emory. So you're not kind of uh, overlooked because of the large undergraduate population. It's really kind of the best of both. And of course, Atlanta, Hartsfield, Jackson Airport, uh, one of the busiest in the world. You can get anywhere from here and you can get here from anywhere. And whether that's you traveling or company recruiters or alumni or you traveling for interviews and job fairs and those sorts of things. Several students are headed to Chicago this week for the National Black MBA um, job fair. So that makes it a lot easier when you don't have to add on multiple hours of travel just to get to the airport. We're about 20 minutes from the airport. Um, and of course, lots of activities in terms of sports and music, our soccer team or football team, if you have a preference. Um, Atlanta United is a lot of fun, so you definitely go to a few games while you're here um, and see the uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So as I said, I want to check back in just about some details of the actual MBA program. So we have two full-time MBA programs, the traditional two-year program, which is four semesters. It starts in late summer for the fall term of your first year. Um, you complete the core curriculum in that first semester and then move into your electives in the spring semester before going off to your summer internship and then returning for the second year of fall and spring of all electives. For the one-year program, the main difference is we're shortening the 
the academic work by one semester. So it's a fantastic return on investment in that you're getting the MBA degree, the full experience, but in less time and with less tuition. So instead of waiting until the summer to start, the one-year program starts earlier in May. It starts in early spring. Um, and then you're completing your core curriculum in the summer, as well as working with the Career Management Center. You have a global trip opportunity in the summer. Everything that really is packed into the first year of business school and the two-year program, we've built into the summer experience for the one-year program. Then instead of an internship, you're going directly into the second year of the two-year program. So you're joining the returning second year students for your electives for the fall and spring. So the only difference is that the one-year program career goals should line up with your past experience or shouldn't be based solely on an internship. So really the only thing you need to kind of be aware of is that if your goal is in investment banking or brand management, those um, areas still consistently hire from their internship pool. So if that's your interest, we'll steer you towards the two-year program. But otherwise, the one-year program could be a great fit for you in addition to the two-year program. And you can apply to both programs without a disadvantage. If you're not sure or you don't want to rule one out, go ahead and apply to both and you could be admitted to both if you're a good fit for those. Um, so definitely don't rule that out until you're ready to make that decision or you know what your options are. Um, so here's a little bit more about the a snapshot of the class sizes, and you'll see, um, again, that small by design, very intentional. The one-year program cohort is pretty small in the summer. You'll have between 40 and 50 students, typically. But then as soon as you complete that summer, you're joining the returning second-year students. So you're immediately adding, adding and broadening your network in that way. Um, for the two-year program, your incoming class is typically 160 to 170. This year, it was exactly 165. Um, um, and so you're coming in with a variety of people, but still a small enough group that you're going to get to know everyone very quickly, in addition to getting to know the, the second years, the one year students. Um, so you have all the benefits of, of a network and a variety and, and diversity there, but also with a manageable size. And again, the professors really enjoy teaching in our program because they will get to know you um, directly through classes and those sorts of things. So what I'll do is I'll go through the application process, give you some kind of important, um, what I know are common questions, but then of course, once we wrap this up, I'll, I'll make sure to answer any questions you have about the application process. Um, and if a question is posted and I miss it, I apologize, I'll come back to that. But um, what we're looking for from the admissions committee are experienced professionals, um, you know, early and mid-career professionals who have a lot to add to the classroom conversation, who have well-researched career goals, and are ready to make an impact and be engaged with our community as well as later on our alumni community and their future employers. So we're really looking for people who have already seen progression and some success and are ready to add the MBA experience onto that to get to the next level or to change paths. So in our um, admissions process, we are looking at your work experience as demonstrated on your resume, as well as the online application form. Um, so we like to see at least two to three years of full-time progressive work experience post your undergraduate degree. So of course, we consider internships and those sorts of things in our consideration, you want to include those on your resume, but specifically, we are looking for two to three years of full-time progressive, full-time work after your undergraduate degree is completed. And then the average is around five and a half to six years. So the ranges go up to eight and 10, but if you, as you get closer to eight and 10 years, you'll need to be aware that that is a little bit more experience than most MBA positions may be looking for. So just be aware of that and be ready to address it in your essays and why um, you still think that this is the right time for the full-time MBA. So it's not necessarily a negative, it's just something to be aware of. In terms of your academic background, what we'll be using to assess that is your are your transcripts from any um, degrees, including a B-commerce degree. Um, as well as a test score. So we do require either the GMAT, the GRE, or an MCAT or LSAT if you're coming from a different background. Um, there is a COVID-19 test waiver request process if you have had difficulty accessing testing sites or testing because of the pandemic. We do have that request process um, posted on the website. I can share a link in a minute, but that is on the website. You can fill out that request form. But in general, we require the GMAT or the GRE. The average 
for the incoming two-year class this past year was about a 690. We don't publish the average for the GRE just because we don't have as much data, but that we absolutely do accept it. We recommend that you use the online conversion tool to get a rough idea of how your test score, your GRE score converts to a GMAT just for your information. Um, but we use our own internal uh, percentages and different things like that to assess that. So, um, so that's important to keep in mind. Um, if you have been completed an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree where the mode of instruction was English, you do not need to submit the TOEFL or IELTS, and you do not need to request a waiver. So if you are based in India, if you were schooled in English and you work in English, um, there is not a need to submit a TOEFL or IELTS. For other students from outside the US, if you um, have not lived and worked in a US speaking country or in a in a US speaking or English, sorry, US speaking, English speaking country um, or English uh, instruction, instructed degree, then yes, you would need to submit a TOEFL or IELTS. But all the waiver criteria are listed on the website. If you meet those criteria, you do not need to request a waiver. You'll just complete your application and we won't, we'll skip that, that requirement part. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the recommendations should be professional. We require two recommendations, typically from former or recent or current supervisors, but we know you can't always tell your current supervisor that you're looking to leave. Um, so you can choose your recommenders in different ways. They should be someone who can speak to your work place personality, how you handle challenges, your strengths, where you're improving, those sorts of things. You can see the recommendation questions on our website. So you can see what we'll be asking those recommenders to tell us about you. We do also accept the common letter of recommendation through GMAT. Um, but one tip is that if you already know who your recommenders are going to be, go ahead and enter their contact information into our application form. And that will generate the email that sends them the link to the online recommendation form so they can be working on that while you're still moving forward. Of course, we have essays. Everyone's favorite part. We ask you for three written essays and one video essay. Um, the questions, again, are on the website. The first question is going to be about your professional goals, why you won an MBA. And we'll talk more about that, certainly about how to research your professional goals and communicate that to us. And we're also going to ask about your leadership experience and some different things. The video essay is not to um, add any stress to your life. It's just another way for us, us to get to know you a little bit beyond the paper. So I explain it this way in that the person who's reading your full application file is um, not the person who might be interviewing you at one point. So the, the part of the video essay does is give all the readers a chance to meet you virtually, um, even though only one of us will get to meet you in the interview. So the video essay questions are meant to be spontaneous, kind of like at a networking event or if you're meeting someone for the first time and you're making small talk. Um, so it's not meant to be high pressure or rehearsed. It's a chance for us to see a little bit of your personality um, and get to kind of give us a little break from the reading more written component. Um, the leadership involvement, of course, is going to be considered, and that is um, reviewed through your resume, through your application form, how you've been involved, whether it was a formal leadership role or you volunteered for committees in your workplace, basically anything outside of your work requirements and how you spend your time outside of your regular job description is what we'd like to hear about in that area. So of course, um, there within the application um, process, we ask for a lot of information. So as the committee is reviewing your application file for admission, we're also reviewing it for scholarship at the same time. So all admitted applicants are automatically considered for merit scholarship. So if you as a candidate are admitted, you'll be notified of that admission decision and of the scholarship award at the same time. A little more than half of our incoming class receive some level of merit award, um, and the Awards range from about 20% of tuition on up to full tuition, obviously very competitive there. Um, but it's definitely worth taking the time to apply, get your admission decision, get that scholarship decision, so you have that full information as you make your enrollment decisions later on. Of course, financial aid is available for permanent residents. You can um, use the FAFSA form for a federal loan. Um, if an international student doesn't have a U.S. co-signer, they can still take out a private loan through our credit union, so you have a lot of different options for funding that degree. Of course, we know that's a major question um, and as you move through this process. So 
We are um, just a few weeks away from our round one deadline. We're really excited. It's coming up soon. It's a wonderful time to get the year kicked off. And if you're started in the process and you're ready to apply, go ahead and apply in round one. Um, it is our smaller round. So we understand if you're waiting um, to apply in round two, there's no downside to that or disadvantage. Um, if you feel your application will be stronger by waiting till January, whether it's retaking the test or you're thinking about all the schools you're applying to and, and when you'll be hearing back and wanting to coordinate between the schools, that's perfectly valid as well. I definitely recommend applying by round two, the January 10th deadline. Um, if you are considering the one-year MBA program, you need to apply by round two. That really should be your, your only deadline, but also for international students to give you the time for the, all the process that comes after you're admitted and after you decide to enroll. Um, that January deadline is really going to be beneficial. So we do review all applicants in round three. Um, there's not necessarily a disadvantage. It's just difficult to know. So you want to get every, especially since you're on this call now, you are on the ball, get moving um, and, and definitely get everything in by that January 10th deadline. And you'll hear back from us with a decision, including your scholarship decision um, um, not long after that. And then we'll have lots of admitted student events, including hopefully an in-person uh, welcome week in the spring. We're working on it, um, but regardless, we'll have some fantastic virtual options as well in case you're not able to get to campus. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. I just wanted to share a little bit more about our namesake, Roberto Goizueta, and how we um, have shaped our community as a school. What we think is important for you as you think about what may be the last school that you add to your uh, resume. This may be the last academic community that you're joining in your career. It could be the terminal degree in your field. Of course, it may not be, but regardless, it should be a transformative, um, a positive experience for you. And that means um, living, in a, living and working in a community that is supportive, that is rigorous and has sets high expectations, but also values individuality um, as well as teamwork. So I just wanted to share that little snapshot of what we think is important at Goizueta, what we hope um, overlaps with your personal core values. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and make sure that we have plenty of time to answer all your questions. So um, just one more plug for our upcoming event. The last week of September is our virtual super week. Um, so I think Abhijit's going to uh, share that link if he hasn't already. And then within that super week event, we have uh, specific um, international student sessions, which could be really helpful for you as you think about um, all the uh, I-20s, all that great stuff. Of course, you know, that's a little further down the road, but um, just in general, that would be great. So yes, um, I'm happy to talk more in detail about the essay prompts. I know that's um, a stress point for a lot of people. We don't often write about ourselves in regular life other than maybe a Facebook status update or captions on our Instagram. So, so it is a little bit challenging to sit down and write about yourself. One of the things that you'll see at the end of each of our questions is a word limit. And those word limits can be a little restraining, but that's intentional because we want you to be aware that you're communicating um, you need to communicate efficiently and not, and you also don't need to write a big novel. So one, one question I always get, I'll go ahead and answer now is, are, you know, can I go over the word limit? We're not counting them. Um, we don't sit and count them up, but if you egregiously exceed the word limit, we will, we will be able to see that. So do try to stick with the word limit. Um, so defining your short-term post and career goals, how your how your past experience really contributes and connects to that post MBA goal. So what we're trying to understand here is why do you want the MBA? What is your professional goal? What kinds of jobs will you plan to be applying for in terms of the internship and the post MBA? And does that line up? Can you tell your story and communicate why that's a good that future position is of interest for you and how your past experience matches that? So imagine you weren't getting an MBA, you were just applying directly for this, your target position. How would you tell your story and pitch that to your interviewer? Of course, we're going to partner with you as a school. Um, so there's uh, so there's that component. You know, you have a good bit of coaching, support, resources, everything else like that. Um, but they, we want to make sure that you also think about the legwork that needs to happen for you and that you've done the research in advance. 
So a good essay answer in this is going to clearly answer the question. I know it sounds simple, but it's uh, it's just true. And um, also clearly define your post MBA goal. Don't be afraid to be specific. Um, you know, we know that you have target companies in mind, those sorts of things. You can go ahead and put that in there. We know that that may change and that you need you do you will need to be flexible during the program the market can change while you're in school as we've seen uh, very clearly um, exemplified in the past couple of years but definitely put in the legwork now connect with um, people who are in the positions that you're targeting so you can get a good idea so you're confident going in that you can explain why you're interested in that goal and why you're a good fit for it so you utilize your undergraduate network utilize LinkedIn um, to reach out and make sure you can answer questions about why you want that consulting role, why you want that product manager role, what it takes to get there, and how we can help you get there. So I think those are the things that, that you want to focus on in that essay. The leadership essay is another challenging one, but I encourage you to think um, outside of the kind of paper version of leadership. So being a leader doesn't mean that you have to have a title of a leader or a CEO or a committee chair or a manager, things like that. We understand that you're early in your career. You may not have led a team yet. You may have, excuse me, my dog is trying to say hello. Um, but uh, we understand that you may not have been in a formal leadership position in the workplace, but I would recommend using a professional example or at least a current or very recent example example if it's not a professional one. It can be a community organization, something like that, but I would recommend keeping it within the last few years as opposed to going back to undergrad. Um, but think about leadership in a situation. If you weren't in a formal leadership role, leadership is really about influencing others and making an impact. So how did you do that in a situation or in a specific role? So that's um, what we're looking to learn as well as understanding um, how you want to develop as a leader in business school. So of course, we I mentioned a few times um, about the Goizueta community. And again, as you look at different schools and you read their essay questions, they the questions we asked should tell you something about what we value as a school. Um, so you see the word community here. This is us trying to understand how you want to engage with your peers in the classroom and outside the classroom, how you want to develop as a student, and why that you understand an experiential program, the value of that, a highly engaged community. So certainly research through the website, through talking to current students about what programming is offered, but also what are your personal goals? You know, do you have a goal to develop your volunteer management skills? Does that mean you want to make sure that you um, do everything you can to lead one of our conferences or our event, large events? Um, you know, is a certain uh, social or affinity group important to you? Is that uh, what's important to you? How will that translate? Um, how will that show up when you're a student here at Goizueta? Yeah, great. Yes, that's the Super Week link, which will be several different events, um, including program overviews for the one year, the two year, and our evening program, which you need to be based in Atlanta to do the evening program, but definitely recommend that. So talking about the, the diversity in the Emory MBA class is a great question. And we uh, measure diversity on several different factors. So of course there's demographic diversity, gender, ethnicity, um, also citizenship diversity, um, and also a variety of experiential diversity. So in terms of your professional backgrounds, your academic backgrounds, we um, are very fortunate that we have a number of applications that we can really shape a class of people we know are motivated and similar in a lot of ways, but by no means the same. You can have a lot in common with your classmates and still be very different. Um, so you'll see um, diversity, um, equity, and inclusion um, exemplified in several different ways across the community as a priority. But also in the classroom, you'll see a variety of different ways of thinking, different professional backgrounds. Um, and the faculty do a wonderful job of facilitating conversation and discussion in the classroom. So it's not just lecture, you're really having conversation and asking different questions. So you are learning through the conversation and through your classmates, in addition to the subject matter expert up at the front of the room, too. So it's a wonderfully collaborative um, 
feel in that same way in the classroom. Um, one thing that I'll mention is our grading system is a little bit different. We don't use the standard A, B, C, D grade scale. We actually use a little something slightly different um, called uh, the, the levels are kind of high pass, performance standard. Um, it's just a little bit different. You can request a numerical grade at the end of the semester and see that. And certainly we do track Dean's list and, and valedictorian, those sorts of things. But overall, most students are, are or, you know, care about grades, but it's not the number one priority. They're trying to learn, develop, stretch, and challenge themselves and work with academic teams and work with their classmates. So um, so that's just some, a little a nugget that you may not know. We actually have a, a different grading scale, so you won't get an A or a B in a class, um, but you will, uh, you will get feedback. You'll also um, have uh, classroom participation involved in your grades, all those sorts of things. Sure. So entrepreneurial management um, is really a kind of a holistic approach. If you, well, if you think about it, it's um, a great kind of capstone approach. When I was a student, a lot of us waited and took entrepreneurship until the end of the program so we could use it as a capstone because you're pulling together all those different components of doing business that you've built a foundation in. So marketing, um, understanding, you know, the, the market demand for whatever it is that you're looking for. Is there a need? Assessing the need. And then, of course, those other components. Um, so what has happened in the past since I was many years ago an MBA student is access to capital has absolutely changed and technology has changed. And so with that has the entrepreneurial mindset that already existed at Goizueta and has just expanded and now is broadened through um, into a center for innovation as well. So um, one of our professors, Charlie Getz, I think um, you'd really enjoy meeting him, reading about him. Um, he is an entrepreneur and angel investor himself, as well as an Emory alum, and came back to teach because he wanted to teach. He does not have a PhD, um, but he is um, a fantastic resource and motivator. And so many years ago, we started a program called Pitch the Professors, where you as a student, individually or as a team, can pitch your business plan to himself, as well as our other professors, and win investment, as well as space in the um, Atlanta technology Atlanta Tech Village, which is um, the fourth largest incubator in the US. And so that's a fantastic um, bit of access that you have. We have a major space in the Atlanta Tech Village, which is in um, the Buckhead area of town, which is um, obviously a great crossroads for technology, entrepreneurship, FinTech, there's so much happening, as well as healthcare technology. Um, then this Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation is just expanding that and broadening it across disciplines too, so that we already had a strong interaction with our health care um, peers, um, technology transfer office in terms of taking medical devices and, and drugs to market, those sorts of things. Um, but now it's being brought in across uh, the disciplines at Emory University. So you have even more access to that. So let me just make sure I'm answering the question correctly. Look at the foundations. So I think um, we as a school, as, as I said, our general management program, and you have so many electives that you don't need to kind of limit yourself in that sense. So you will, of course, graduate with a general management degree. You'll have the leadership development components and then can also pursue entrepreneurship electives and, and programming and activities. So most students end up with more than one concentration, typically two concentrations, um, but also the ability to engage in several different outside the classroom activities, projects, case competitions, business plan competitions, um, all those sorts of things that really are so beneficial to you as a student in, in putting putting to application the new skills that you're learning in the classroom and the knowledge you're, you're developing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I apologize in advance. We um, typically don't offer student connections during the summer because people are um, busy with their internships, but we decided to do it this summer and then, but now we're at a little bit of a backlog. So I do apologize. Um, you can, we are getting those things turned around as quickly as possible. If you have a specific question or request, I would definitely just reach out to me directly. I'm happy to answer a question. Um, we also have what we call ambassador assemblies. I think those would be a perfect opportunity. Um, so those are Friday um, mornings 
at Friday morning Atlanta time at 9.30. And those are what we call ambassador assemblies. It's current students on a Zoom open to answer any questions. And so we do some that are specifically topic-based. So we had a group of students from South Asia that um, hosted a session. We have that recording we can share. Um, we also will do it by function, by industry. So consulting, we'll have a technology one. Those are really a great way to connect directly with students over Zoom in a casual setting. There's no mission staff involved. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And let me see. If, and so those are posted on our website as well. We'll also have several current students involved in the virtual super week coming up that I've been plugging. Um, but so I apologize for the delay. In a normal time, it would be a quick turnaround of about a week. But right now we're looking at a couple weeks turnaround for, for Connect with an Ambassador. So thank you for your patience. So yes, candidates with um, a three-year bachelor's degree from India are eligible to apply for admission at Goizueta. So, um, so there's no kind of difference in that process. Same way we're going to review the full application, you are definitely eligible to apply and potentially be admitted. And just shift from financial services to the technology sector. Yeah, this is a great question. So uh, uh, many students coming into the MBA program, particularly the full-time MBA, are seeking a change, a career switch or shift or pivot, whatever word you want to use. Um, but that's really why the Career Management Center starts working with students from the very beginning to identify that target. And like, as I said, too, that research into before you even apply is really helpful so that you know what your target is and how you can tell your story. Um, but you're working with a career coach that knows that target industry very well and can help you with selling your previous experience to those employers. Also identifying what skills are transferable, what, you know, what may not be as big a switch as you think, or how to target the aspect of an industry or a functional area that is less of a, a hard left turn so that it is an easier kind of transition. So it may be that your ultimate goal is, is two steps is, is two steps away instead of one step, but that's maybe part of that transition. So it's absolutely possible. So a large percentage of incoming students will go through some sort of functional or industry pivot um, or shift, as we call it. So yes, yeah, so the one-year MBA program, as I said, is the same degree. It's the same program. It's just accelerated and does not include the internship. So for most students going into the one-year program, they will be looking a little bit more towards the acceleration career piece as opposed to a major pivot. So if you don't have any experience in your, in your post-MBA goal, we probably would steer you to a two-year program. But again, it just depends on the specific industry um, and how what their hiring process is. And also, on your academic and professional background. So one component to think about is your academic background. If it matches, you know, if you have a technical, analytical, quantitative business undergraduate, that's not only going to help you in the accelerated core of the elective, but also help you make a move in your career so you can demonstrate those skill sets um, without necessarily having um, work experience in that position. So yes, the one-year MBA program is fantastic for early and mid-career professionals who are accelerating or returning to their, um, you know, accelerating, speeding up their growth in their current area, um, or some job switch opportunities. Yeah, so data science specifically, we do have the Technology Association. Um, there are a lot of um, analytical coursework and components um, across the disciplines within the school. Um, so I think you certainly would find other people with similar experiences and backgrounds and probably professional goals. Um, and also uh, interest in possibly how data science, how you're applying that in terms of what your profession looks like and, and your interests and those sorts of things. So the Technology Association comes to mind specifically specifically, um, but we have, I think, 80 different clubs. And if we don't have something that you see an interest in or a need for, you can start one. Um, that has absolutely happened. The Wine and Cheese Club is only a few years old. Um, there's been wine clubs and cheese clubs separately that they brought together. Um, but that's definitely something you would have access to. One thing I will plug is our program office, the staff who supports you through your experience in the program. So your academic advisors, um, your event kind of coordinators, the actual program dean, Brian Mitchell, 
they um, really are going to do everything they can to help you make the most of your time as a student and and really engage with your classmates and and leave your mark on Goizueta in the same way that we hope to leave a mark on you. So if, if there is a club or any interest that you have that, that you see a need for and can rally some classmates, you could definitely get that started and see what you can do with that interest as a, as a formal club. This is a great question for Professor Professor Usha Ratcliffe, um, who I definitely would um, encourage you to check out. I can find her profile. She um, has hosted a couple of different blockchain conferences over the past few years for alumni and current students, as well as community members. Um, so that is definitely an area that um, falls within accounting, of course, and then Center for Alternative Investments has had some engagement in these different kind of newer fronts of, of finance and, and different areas. Um, so let me post, I'll get that link for you as well. But yes, yeah, so I think you definitely would find um, opportunities uh, there through USHA as well as Classbox um, and some other professors. I'll find the link. So this I'm going to give to Abhijit is our faculty profile for Usha Ratcliffe, who's just one of my favorite people on the planet. You might, probably would have her for core accounting, and she's just a lot of fun. So definitely encourage you to check out her profile and even email her if you want to. She'd be happy to talk. So um, I encourage you to, to connect with her. I validate some informal leadership roles done in undergrad, like being in the founding team for an entrepreneurship cell in my college, which got recognized in a later stage. Okay. Um, yeah, so well, I'll kind of I'll try to answer generally. We definitely want to hear about experiences you've had during your undergraduate time, whether it was organizational leadership, clubs, um, you know, for sports, things that really were important to you and took up a good amount of time. I think that's a good kind of measure is how much time did you dedicate to this in addition to your studies? You can include that on your resume um, as well as in the person of the application form. So absolutely in terms of um, sharing with us what that club was, what happened, what you did, what the outcome was. Um, and, and we're not too concerned about what that it might have been recognized a little bit later. You know, some things take a longer time to have a full outcome, um, but definitely it's worth sharing um, in that way. So also just, um, I see the essay popped up. I did want to remember to mention that the optional essay is also something that you have there. So in the application form, if there's anything that you want to address, whether it's positive or negative, um, maybe concerned about grades or test score, or it's something you really want to highlight that we haven't highlighted in another place. I definitely recommend using the optional essay component to do that. You can write it in an essay form or it can be bullet points. It doesn't have to be another essay or a letter or something like that. So I do recommend taking advantage of that only if you need to share information with the committee that is not um, shared elsewhere. So you do not have to do an optional essay. You should only use it if, if you need to, but it is there for you to share anything you want the committee to know. Great question. Um, so I didn't talk too much about our interview process, but I'm so I'm glad you asked. So we do um, review applications and then invite candidates to do an admissions interview. This year we have committed to doing the full cycle of only virtual interviews. So they will be Zoom interviews one-on-one -on -one with a member of the admissions committee. We may have some alumni interviewers available on certain specific dates, but most likely you'll be interviewing with a member of the admissions committee, member of our staff. Um, but everyone will interview via Zoom, so directly to the webcam, a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, with the admissions committee member. The invitations for interviews can go out really at any point between the time um, of the deadline and the decision release. So you could get an interview invitation very quickly after you submit your application or maybe a week or so before the decision release because we really are reviewing 
applications individually and holistically. So it's just a matter of getting through the entire um, pool. So those invitations will come via email. You'll be given a calendar um, and a link to, to schedule that. Then you'll be preparing to meet with the, the admissions uh, representative over Zoom for typically about a 30 minute meeting. Um, so some basic Zoom tips, you know, to, to make sure your background is is not too distracting or there's not moving things in your background. It doesn't, you don't need to worry about how fancy it is. We know everyone's in kind of different situations, um, but making sure that it is kind of calm and you're not going to be interrupted um, and that you're able to look directly at the camera or very close to it. I know I'm kind of struggling right now, um, but it should be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You want to be ready to talk through your resume, talk through your career story in a succinct way. So that's definitely something to prepare is your introduction of you know what your background is, why you're applying to business school. And remember that the person who's interviewing you is actually not the person who will have read your application file. And that's intentional. So you don't need to, you will repeat some things from your essays and that's okay. They haven't read your essays. Um, they've reviewed your resume, but that's it. And we do that intentionally so that um, more than one person, we get multiple perspectives on each applicant file um, in the committee. So the person who's interviewing you will have your resume in front of them. You'll talk them through it, tell you're a little bit of, of basically an elevator pitch or a networking introduction to what your background is, why you want to pursue the MBA um, and getting ready for that. And then you'll have a conversation, kind of what you do, what you've learned through your career, how you think you'll contribute to the classroom, what you're looking forward to about business school and about Goiz Vida specifically. Um, I recommend thinking about the different factors of business school that are most important to you because of course, we know what's important to us. We have components of the program that we think are fantastic and special. But how are you going to make your decision? What's important to you about business school? It doesn't have to be everything. Um, you don't have to be excited about every single thing that we offer. We want to know what specifically um, is important for you. And then be um, have a couple of questions ready to ask the interviewer. They'll try to make sure there's time at the end of the conversation to, to talk about, um, to answer any questions that you have about the program or the rest of the application process. Um, so try to, to come, you know, review the website and, and look for things that you'd like to hear more about or things that you couldn't find on the website, um, questions for the interviewer. But um, you just need one or two. You don't need to have a whole list because there'll be limited time. But mainly um, you want to have a conversation and be relaxed and in the moment as much as you can. So you're listening to what they ask you and then answering that as opposed to over rehearsing and just kind of script going off a script that you've already prepared um, so we're excited to meet you in the interview setting we really do enjoy meeting every as we would interview everyone if we could we don't have that capacity but but each interview that we do offer um, is is an invaluable time for us and we really enjoy spending it with you um, face to face even though it's virtual oh great question so Y'all, Emory University Goiz Wedded Business School is probably my favorite place on earth. Um, I have a lot of special memories and affinities from uh, being a student here growing up in Atlanta, but also really every single day for the past 13 years, I have worked with incoming MBA students and every single one can tell you that they were transformed in some way, they, were, they grew and were enlightened in some way, and they wish they could come back and do it all over again. So that is not, I'm not exaggerating. Every single Single graduation they all say it was went so fast I want to stay I want to come back and that's what they do as alumni so the three big things about Goiz Weta that are so important are the community um, the location in a fantastic business city um, and then also the world-class education that you get from these faculty and from your classmates and from the alumni network as well. So that this is a, a one or two year experience in the short term, but a lifetime um, engagement with uh, Goiz Vida Business School. So thank you so much for joining this session. Really nice to meet you all. As I said, um, please do feel free to reach out via email and, and I hope I will see you at Super Week. <laughs>